I'd like to welcome you to Appsian's webinar on SAML 2.0 and Oracle eBusiness Suite. What we really have is a native SAML solution. And what we do is through our application security platform, we're going to communicate directly to the identity provider. So it's going to allow us to communicate um, out from EBS to the identity provider to, to request or verify that that authorization, they've passed that. Um, authentication attempt and they're in there they're going to be able to access the system so nice part about it is we're going to be able to handle all of that for you you're not going to have to customize your system a little bit of configuration and this more the support and maintenance is going to be included you know coming from us as the vendor when we look at our security platform for EBS, what happens is you're going to, you know, the user itself is going to be accessing the system through, you know, the browser or the client. And what we're going to do is we're sitting inside of the web server. Our supported releases for single sign-on, I, I want to go ahead and comment on this. You can actually see um, the, the release, kind of what we're working with up at the top right here on the platform is, you know, 12.2.x. So uh, when we're talking about some of the releases earlier than this, obviously there's a lot of difference in um, structure and architecture between these. So, so this is where we're working so with single sign-on in that 12.2 experience so we have our security platform that's going to sit within the web server to where we can actually do the communication and actually call out we do have some other functionality available in ebs as well but I'm just focusing on single sign-on today so i figured what we do is uh jump into demo so i'm just going to change my screen share here real quick um this is going to be a relatively quick demo um because it's really uh, you know single sign-on in and of itself is um it's just that it doesn't really regard you know whether i'm demoing this in people soft or ebs it's it, it's just kind of one of those things that's going to going to work so what what i'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a URL, and that target URL is going to be a URL that's a deep embedded access point inside of the EBS system. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that up there. So what you can see is I'm hitting um, the EBS web server, and I'm making a request of a particular um, page inside of the system. So I'm going to walk through this a little bit first from the communication perspective and communication flow, um, just because what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very quick. So what's gonna happen is we are going to, once I hit enter, we're gonna go out and attempt to connect to EBS. What's gonna happen is we're gonna see that this is an unauthenticated request of the EBS system. So we're going to immediately then check with the configured identity provider. I've got this system configured with Okta. So, Okta is going to check to see if this user has an authenticated session within Okta. It's going to return back no in this scenario. And from that point, it's going to challenge me with my Okta credentials. So user ID and password coming from Okta. Once I supply those credentials and pass the Okta validation, it's going to then come back and serve to me the page inside of EBS. So that's the process flow of what we're going through here. I wanted to kind of explain that to you very quickly because it is a very quick process of what's going to happen. So once I hit enter, um, you're gonna see that I get prompted with um, Okta. So now, since I don't have that session, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my user ID and, and password for this. As you can tell, it probably takes me longer to put in my user ID and password. Once I do, it's going to sign us into the EBS system, and it's going to go ahead and bring up the, the browser. So now I can, you know, go through. I've got the access. I can log in and do whatever I need to do at that particular point inside of EBS, and it's going to go ahead and launch out the application. So, you know, as I, as I said earlier, this is kind of a very streamlined as as are most of the single sign on, you know, demos and webinars. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, important to note that we're able to communicate with really any SAML2 provider from that perspective. So it, it's just a configuration on our side to be able to um, communicate with maybe Yacht or EDFS Azure or something like that. Um, 
it just has to be able to communicate on the SAML2 um, protocols from, from that perspective. So I'm actually going to, to move back over to the PowerPoint at this particular point. Um, and, and really, when we, when we talk about um, you know, tips for a successful SSO implementation, um, what we're looking for here, obviously what you're looking for is a seamless interaction with EBS. You want those end users to be able to maneuver in and out of the target applications and be able to get to their workflows as needed. You know, this is what we're able to do. Um, going back to how we, you know, how some of the other integrations, especially when you're looking at proxy servers or gateways or something like that, you, you don't have to have any additional hardware. We're going to sit within that EBS space as our as our architecture displayed and you don't have to customize um, to build the SSO solutions so we're able to provide that for you out of the box to where you can you know if you decide down the line that you want to, to change to a different identity provider which actually happens quite frequently these days um, you know it's something that you can just change your configuration and be able to communicate with the other one also it, it is important for a full suite of performance that you're able to support the deep link navigation because that allows the users really to have the full features of what they're looking for, being able to utilize and dive in and really take advantage of that single sign-on. And as I said, it really has that um, identity provider flexibility and you don't have those additional carrying costs. So when you're looking at a return on investment, it's very fast, very quick, and it's not gonna have you know ongoing hidden costs by you know, going through custom solutions and customizations of the application. So it's gonna allow you to stay current on your maintenance uh, from EBS without having to, you know, spend a lot of time and extra money trying to support and go through testing of a custom solution with single sign-on. When we look at our implementations, you know, uh, there, there's all sorts of support. You know, it really boils down to the implementation you're not having to customize the system. You're not bringing in additional hardware. So, you know, when you're talking about maintaining this, it really is stable tested. We've gone through this and there is a fixed maintenance with fixed cost support structure behind it. Our support's available 24 seven and, and we update those particular, you know, support with the things that are out there. So when you look at that on a custom side, obviously all of those things aren't going to be there from the support situation. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.